Aloha and welcome to our Naviance Parent Night. I want to thank all of you for responding to the invitation. I want to thank PAR for co-hosting this with us and all of our counselors who are here tonight um, and all of you too for extending your day to join us this evening. My name is Elisa Braffith. I'm the Dean of Student Support Services and um, let's begin with a pule. Ho'omalukako. Oh, most gracious and heavenly Father, we, we thank you. We thank you for gracing us with the kuleana that you set upon us to our parents to raise these children, to be good citizens, Lord, to be good children of the Lord. And we thank you for the kuleana that you give us as educators to help the parents, support the parents, guide them through their, through their current life and into their future, Lord. Let us work together, the children, the parents, and the school, to, to look for the best, best and brightest future for each and every one of these students. Let them find their potential, increase their capability, Lord, and aspire to their ambitions. Okay, so welcome again. And, um, you know, I give thanks to the Lord, I give thanks to our leaders at Kamehameha, and to our people who are here, but most of all, I give thanks to you for being here tonight and um, sharing this evening again with us. I wanna just um, give you a little bit of background. I will be doing more introductions, but I wanna give you a little bit of background on Naviance and where did this, this thing come from? Is it, you know, is it a hydrofoil, a super ferry, a Navi something? But um, back in 2008, when I started here as the dean, um, Randy Porras Tang, who is the junior class vice principal, and at the time, she was the principal of Wailu High School, gave me a call. And she says, hey, you gotta look into this program. Our school, no more money for this, but maybe you guys wanna check it out. And she had gone to, I think, a conference or something and saw uh, a presentation by Naviance. So at the time, I was still a little green too, and I, I referred to Bernie Silva, who's uh, now retired from counseling. He was coming off of uh, senior year at the end of my first year, and I said, Bernie, um, can you help me do some exploration of this program, Naviance, and tell me what it's about? And he said, sure. Well, I got good feedback from him, like this. And I said, oh, okay, that's good feedback. So we continue to explore by conducting tri-campus webinars, looking, at, uh, looking for gateways to get past KS security, and I don't mean the guys down at Pune Gate or Main Gate, real security that is tighter than Fort Knox. Um, we ran through that revolution maybe for at least two years, always hitting into a, a speed bump or a locked gate. Finally, um, technology, as it rapidly evolved, a little tech bird told me about something called Emerging Tech, a program within our own system. And he said to me, he says, why don't you try that route? Well, I was confident that I could navigate the KS waters. I needed someone to help me with the college side at end of it. So Catherine K. Kaulike, who was um, a senior member of the college counseling program at the time, came on board and together we went through numerous presentations Eventually, she brought on curriculum folks who are going to be presenting to you tonight, um, Mrs. Aonani Ahakuela Chaniski and Mr. Vince Akipinti. They spent, I don't know, one or two summers do, working on curriculum so that when we were ready to launch, we would have some map to go by. So once we had acquisition in place, the real deal began to unfold. Counselors were pretty much transported in warp speed into 21st century counseling. Um, that was in 2013. However, in spite of the quick transition, everyone has done their part to learn how to navigate themselves and guide your sons and daughters through the process at each grade level. I also wanna take time to acknowledge a parent, and I don't know if he's in the audience, Grant Urata, ninth grade parent. He's probably gonna sink down in his seat if he is out there but he actually came on board through technology as our project manager to help us really look at the features and 
know how to converse with Navient to get the different features that we needed. And he's still on board as a project manager and consults and helps guide the way. Anyway, through Navient, we can learn more about your, your children's aspirations, potential, and ambition. Tonight, the counselors will give, it, give you an overview on how that's done. Additionally, parent access is a gateway for you to be able to hover and learn how you can stay apprised of the tasks your sons and daughters need to do along the journey of planning and preparing for their young adult life in the college or post-secondary program of their choice. So um, some of you may have already uh, gotten the email to access Naviance. I urge you to check your emails if you haven't. How many have checked it? Excellent. How many have gone on to, through the tutorial? Raise your hands. OK, what I want you to know is it takes at least 24 hours to actually get the access, because it's not one of those instant things that you, you you're not like charge cards. You click, and they charge you, right? No, we, we're not doing that. We actually have to send that to our administrative coordinator, who then takes each one and opens up the account for each of you, access to each of you. So be a little bit patient. Give us 24 hours, and uh, we'll get that to you. If you don't, then give us a call. But I'm not going to give you the phone number right now. No, just kidding. Um, if you don't, call the counseling center at uh, Haleakala, and um, you can you know, find out how you can do that, um, get access. So. Um, Without further ado, I want to introduce the counselors who are here tonight, starting with our ninth grade counselors. We have Tiara Lee Gustillo. Vince Akipinti, Mr. O. And we don't have our outreach counselor here, Miley Munden, who is actually our boarding outreach has been pinch hitting and doing a heck of a good job, but she's out, she had to leave, she's out sick. And she came here anyway and I sent her home. So, uh, but she's the one who's helping the team, she's part of that team. On our 10th grade team, we have uh, Aonani Ahakuelu Chiniski. <laughs> Mrs. Tara Bagayas. Sorry, I had to go alphabetical. I had to make sure I got everybody straight. And Mrs. Samantha Landry Smith, who may be a familiar face to some of you had other um, children come through. And finally, last but not least, we have, oh, he's not, you're not last yet. In the back, and I know she was going, yay, she forgot me. Mrs. Lynette Lukella, she's there. She's our learning service coordinator. And finally, we have Steve Morales, also known as Mr. Mo, and other things, but he is, he is our resident college counselor with the team tonight. At this point, I'm gonna turn it over to you folks. Drum roll or something. Aloha folks, aloha students, welcome. Good turnout tonight, pleased to see that, very good. Our agenda for tonight, and we will all be speaking, we'll be covering what we are doing in ninth and 10th grade with Naviance, but also we're gonna project out and talk about what we're gonna be doing in 11th and 12th grade. So tonight's agenda, we're going to, actually our counseling teams have already been introduced, so no need to go there. We're gonna talk about the importance of Naviance related to each grade level. What tasks are we doing with the students? Why are we doing it? And what is it setting up in preparation for the next year and eventually to the senior year? Okay, okay. freshman counseling team. Our department here was kind enough to introduce us all. My name is Vince Alcapenti. I'm servicing the alphabet KO through Z. Our counseling team will be working with the class of 2018 for the entire four year term, taking them all the way to graduation May 2018 at Blaisdell. Partner, Mrs. Tiara Lee Gustillo, she'll be working with the first half of the alphabet, A through KN, again, all four years. And Mrs. Miley Munden, who's not here tonight, she's our outreach counselor. Okay, sophomores counseling team? Yeah. Hi, everyone, welcome. 
Um, so to introduce us, we are the sophomore counseling team. Uh, my name is Tara Bagayas, and I have the first half of the alpha. So I have last names A through KA. Aloha, I'm Onani Ahakuelo Chernisky, and I have students in the second half of the alpha, KE through Z. And I'm Mrs. Landry Smith, Samantha Landry Smith, and I do outreach, so I service all sophomores or class of 2017 as needed. So just a quick, uh, where we're located. So we're actually located in Kekuanaoa 206. Um, so for some of the parents that are alumni, it used to be the former dining hall. Uh, so it's across the field, um, right before Bishop Hall is where we're located. We're there from 7.30 to 3.30, sometimes a little bit later, sometimes a little bit earlier also. Um, so please feel free to give us a call if you have any questions. Okay, and so um, what we wanted to start with tonight is for some of you, especially for the freshmen, this may be the first time that you're really having a presentation with regards to or familiar with um, the counseling department. So as Mr. Okapinti said, um, we are teamed. So we're going to be following your student and your class and supporting the class for all four years. And within the team, we have certain specialties. But in general, these are some of the things that we are going to be helping um, your student with. We go over academic concerns. We also do personal, social, and emotional concerns. Later on in junior and senior year especially, we um, have the opportunity to bring in some other counselors who are going to be working with your students specifically on college career and self-assessment or college knowledge basically but we're going to also be touching on the college career and self-assessment programs throughout the first two years also with the help of um, Naviance as Mrs. Braffith had mentioned. Um, what we do is we work on areas of improvement and any types of what I like to call everyday obstacles that your student may have in regards to their academic success. And so besides academic things like um, time management, you know, uh, arranging, being a liaison with the, the teachers, we also work with um, changing schedules, specifically with the grade level counselors, and we work with um, the standardized testing all the way through. Um, we also work with more, um, kind of personal, social, emotional concerns, some of those issues, especially the ones that, um, or any types of issues really, that have to do with barriers that may be a little bit harder to handle than just everyday obstacles, um, I help support with also. So I, I have also some background in doing some, um, you know, referring to agencies, outside agencies, and different you know, resources that we can tap into in the community that can help your family out with whatever types of challenges are getting in the way of your student's academic success. So we are really a team and we work with them for all four years and we um, actually even literally move with them <laughs> all four years. After the first two years at Kekuan, um, Oa, we move up to Haleakala with all of our boxes and everything and we move into our offices up there in order to be more accessible to your students. And so we really do watch them grow through all the four years and we try to help with the grade level counselors looking over every schedule, every schedule change and every credit that your students have and myself um, taking care of the things that may come up during the course of the way. We have college counselors that get involved in junior and senior year and also the support of Mrs. Lukella and Ms. Ashley who are our learning service coordinators and are able to help with more specific academic concerns. So um, that's a brief rundown and today we're going to be starting with talking about more specifically going over the college career and self-assessment programs that are offered through Naviance. Okay, so um, this is the gist of the workshop tonight. We are going to be talking about Naviance. So it is a great program and we're very happy that we are offering this here. It's a college and career planning resource uh, for all of our students here on campus 9 through 12. It helps students with goal setting. So each year at the beginning of the school year, we have our students actually setting goals within Naviance. So you can have them show them to you. Um, you can ask them to open it up because I'm not sure exactly what the parent access looks like, but they would be able to show you what goals they have set for this year. 
And some of them may be academic, some of them may be per more personal or college related, and some of them may have both of those types of goals in there. Um, this is a big one. So it helps students with the self-discovery piece. So they, they are learning, there are several assessments in here um, where each of the grade levels are you know, um, having the students um, work on these assessments. And from this, this, the students are learning about themselves, what their interests are, um, what their strengths are. We have them working with learning styles inventories. We have them working with career inventories. So there's a number of different things that we're using in here, these inventories, so that they can learn more about themselves. Each year, the students will also be working on building their resume. The resume is a graduation requirement from the counseling department. It's one of the three that we have. So each year, they look at their resume at the beginning of the school year, and we also have them looking at it at the end of the school year. Um, we're encouraging them to add those things in to their resume so that they don't forget, because if they wait until senior year, then sometimes we forget what we actually did back in freshman year. Okay, also post-secondary career exploration. Um, it definitely can help with this. There are a lot of uh, career uh, careers in there. There's a whole area where they can go in and they can um, research various careers. Um, the inventories will give them some idea of what careers um, may be applied to them based on their interests and abilities. And it also um, gives them information uh, what I find very valuable is that they can get information from the federal government as to wages by state. So they're able to research those kinds of things. Okay, and then the last one would be the college search and application process. Um, they are going to be, the application process is going to be all done in Naviance if they're using the Common App. Um, but they're also able to do college search in various ways. There's one part of it when we come to the junior section that um, we'll, we'll talk about it and how they can hone in on to a college that will be the best fit for them. So now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Tiara Lee Castillo so she can talk about what the freshmen are doing. Aloha, thank you all for taking the time. So for ninth grade, there are seven tasks that they complete in Naviance. The first thing that they're gonna do is an inventory called All About Me. With this inventory, we're able to find out more about them, how they view themselves, um, who is important to them, who they feel that they can go and talk to if anything comes up. Also, it talks about goals that they may have as well as activities that they're involved in or would like to be involved in. So that helps us to open up the year and find out more about them as they find out more about us. The next thing we do is our learning support coordinator, Mrs. Lucella, actually does this lesson and they learn about different learning styles they do another inventory, which helps to categorize what type of learner they are, whether it be visual, auditory, kinesthetic, or tactile. From that, we did a follow-up survey really quickly just to find out how it all panned out in the year and if the kids felt that they agreed or disagreed with those tallies. We found that the majority of the freshman class actually are kinesthetic learners, with the second being tactile, and then um, visual and auditory being the last. So that helps us, we share that information also with our administration so that they can help facilitate that with the teachers. And so in meeting, you know, we encourage the kids to share this information with their teachers as well so that the teachers can help them learn the best way possible. Um, the other thing, the next thing that we do is the next three tasks, which are to complete career cluster finder, add the career clusters to their like favorites list, and then to add um, careers to that list. Um, so with this, it's a another inventory that they do. And at the end of the inventory, the really neat part about that is that it gives them a list of careers that probably best match them. The kids can then agree or disagree with those findings, but at least it gives them a start. 
to, hey, oh, I didn't know I could look into arts and photography or design or something like that. From there, the Naviance helps them to dive deeper into each career, as Mrs. Cherniski talked about, um, that they're able to find out what the wages are for those careers, what kinds of skills and knowledges they need to know um, to be in that field, so which will help them guide their four-year plan here at Kamehameha, as well as what colleges would be best for them. And then, um, again, current salaries and wages, so they can see for themselves, like, oh, is this going to be good for me and my family? After we do the registration process, which is soon, uh, we'll be bringing them back and we'll be beginning to build their resume again. Um, this is to help them remember the amazing things that they're doing already as freshmen and to build and highlight their academic career, what kind of honors that they have, what kind of volunteer work they have. Maybe some of them have work experience already. Um, that would be important for them to start noting down. Are they involved with athletics? Um, any extracurricular things, and they can also start writing narratives about themselves as well, so they can start preparing themselves for when they start to apply for colleges. Oh, sorry, one last thing to mention. The asterisk that you see, again, next to build resume, also signifies that this is a graduation requirement that they need to fulfill um, before graduation. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Mrs. Bagayas, who will talk about 10th grade. Hi, welcome again. OK, so for 10th grade, we are doing seven tasks in Naviance. We completed all seven of them first semester. And the guidance we have for second semester um, will be related to registration and getting them ready for junior year. Um, so the 10th grade, we did first thing we started off with was the game plan survey. Um, so that was a survey to give the students an idea of what they, um, you know, kind of way how to navigate for the next few years. So we did that um, 10th grade year, and they'll do it again in the upcoming junior year. Complete at my advantage. So the multiple intelligence personality, it was an inventory the students took with us. Um, I don't remember the exact amount of questions, but students were able to go in, answer all the questions, um, and based on the, the way they answered the questions, their results inform them of what type of intelligence they look at. So similar to the learning styles inventory, um, it looked at how the students learn, what's the best way for them to learn, um, based on how they answer the intelligence questions. Um, and again, all these results are in Naviance, so please you know, ask your students to log on for you um, and just kind of show you what their results were. Third one was uh, Prep Me, which is a program that they can ta um, actually use. Um, this one's really great because it helps prepare them for the PSAT and SAT uh, test that they have coming up. Um, with the PSAT, they completed in October, so we did do this with them before that test. But again, they can go back in and they have the PSAT again junior year and SAT uh, junior senior year. Um, so what that was is it gave them a test on the three different sections of the SAT. Um, based on that test, it came up with an individualized study plan for your student. Uh, so based on how your student did in those three sections, it would tell them their areas of strength, areas of improvement, um, and as they progress, as they keep practicing with the test, it'll give them, it'll start to make it more uh, difficult for them so they can get a better, you know, if it's an area that they maybe need to improve, it'll help them strengthen that area. Um, the PSAT we took in October, and we did that as a grade level. Um, the, the last one for the Naviance was we did the career interest profiler. So again, it was an inventory that gave students, um, I want to say it was about 100 something questions that they had. And it was just, you know, no right or wrong answers, just based on how they answered it. It asked them different things, you know, I like doing this, I like doing that. And they could answer it, you know, however they wanted to be. We asked them that they be honest because then it'll pull up careers based on how they answered the questions. So for example, if you know a student indicated that maybe they're very interested in a career working in you know, marine biology, um, it would pull different careers related to how they answered the questions. So once the profile was created for the student, we asked them to pick two, uh, two to three careers from that list um, and find information about it. So finding out what kind of schooling they would need for it, um, finding out you know, what the salary would be in the different states. And then lastly, we had them, oh, excuse me. 
Lastly, we had them uh, go back and revisit their resume. So again, we asked them if they've had any type of experience that they want to post on their resume from their freshman year. And we asked that they go back in. So we asked them to list you know, anything that they feel they would want their potential college to know. So any volunteer experience that they do, um, any hobbies, extracurricular activities they do if they're working, just anything that they feel would be helpful for them as they're applying. We asked them to start keeping track of it very early. So come senior year, you know, they're good to go. They can just go back in, revisit, and they'll have all the information there. Okay, so next up, um, Nani Trinitsky is going to come up to go over the junior year, not beyond. Thank you. Okay, so now we're with the junior tasks. And so for you sophomore parents, um, we're preparing your children to move up to the upper campus. Um, that's going to be a transition for them in itself. But here is where we're going to get very, very serious about uh, the college and uh, career planning here. So we're lucky enough, I don't think we mentioned this before, we used to only have two college counselors here who would service both our junior and senior classes. We're lucky enough now, um, this year, we started with four college counselors. So um, your children you know, will have better access to a counselor and our college counselors will be able to spend more time um, working with your children. So we're very fortunate with that. Okay, so for 11th grade, they have nine tasks in Naviance to complete. Okay, so we start, we're gonna start the year off here with the game plan survey. So again, we're gonna have them fill this out. So this is something that they're gonna be doing every year. We start them off with this. What are your plans for you know, college? Do you plan to go to college? If so, what kinds of colleges are you looking at and what kinds of careers are you looking at as well? Then um, we're also going to be having them work with Prep Me again. They were introduced, sophomores were introduced to that this year. We had them, the sophomore class finished, they completed one inventory, um, excuse me, they, they completed one of the tests in there so they could select which one they wanted to. So we're hoping that they take advantage of this um, going into junior year as well because it will help them prepare for both the PSAT and the SAT. Uh, then again, in October next year, the, uh, excuse me, later on this year, they will be taking their second PSAT. And then they will complete the Supermatch College Search. So this is, um, this is great because it gives them 25 things to select from. So things like, do you want to go to an urban school, a rural school, a suburban school? Do you want to go to a, you know, a large school with 20,000 students or more? Or do you want to go to a school that only has maybe 5,000 students or less? So they get to select these different things. Um, they also get to select, you know, there's also a part there where they can um, select what region they want to go to, whether it's the west, the east, the midwest, the south, if they want to stay here in Hawaii. So they go through these 25 things these 25 items, and then they're going to click a button, and then it's going to bring up colleges that meet the criteria that they have input there. And then they can go ahead and they can start research, researching this using um, the list that comes up. But by no means do they have to stick only to that list. They're, you know, they're able to research any college um, that they wish to. From that, we're going to ask them to add colleges that they're thinking about to this list. As counselors, as grade level counselors and our um, outreach counselor, we can also add colleges that we think may be a good fit for them. And then our college counselors will also be able to add uh, colleges to that list as well. So the students have access to this. Hopefully you will be able to see it at some time too. So you can see what your child is thinking about. Okay, so here is an inventory um, that will build on the cluster finder that's done in freshman year and the career interest profiler that is done in sophomore year. So this will be the last inventory that the students do in junior year. It will be do what you are. So the career interest profiler gives what we call, is very similar, it gives like a Holland code to them. Uh, the do what you are will give them something uh, related to the Myers-Briggs type indicator. 
so the MBTI. So from those, um, you know, it's going to be, you know, another way for them to measure what they're interested in. It will give them careers based on the inventory. Um, it's an 80s uh, question, it's all situational, and it's by gender. So if it's for boys, you know, by boys and girls, it'll be, it'll be separated. So it's a lot of reading, um, and they have to be very thoughtful about it when they go through it, but they get to select, and from their answers, it's going to give them a code, and from that, it's also going to give them uh, careers that they um, can be looking at. So very valuable. And just to let you know that all of the grade level counselors um, have taken all of these inventories. So we know exactly what your child is doing. We have, we're actually doing it as well. So we're coming out with you know, the same kind of information that they're getting. Okay, now this is a big one, attending college visits. So as juniors, they're now gonna be able to attend college visits. And we have between 150 to 200 colleges that come in over 200, a little over 200 colleges that come in every year. So your child will be able to attend college visits. Um, and you know, they can attend, it doesn't only have to be during their free period, but if their teacher allows them to go, they have to get approval, then they will go ahead and register through Naviance to attend those college visits. And We've already talked to the sophomore class about this, you know, that this is going to be coming up and we're hoping that they take advantage of it. Okay, and then they will have their first meeting with their college counselor, their junior college counseling meeting. And so Mr. Morales and Mrs. K. Kaulike are the college counselors for, that are assigned to the current sophomore class. And so they'll be meeting with our students, the sophomore class students, and then um, Mrs. Baum. And we have Mr. Lee, who's an interim college counselor. Um, they will be meeting, they will be the college counselors for our, our freshman class. Okay, and then again, you see the resume. So we're gonna have them look at it at the beginning of the school year in their very first guidance class, and then we'll have them look at it again at the end so that they can continue to build on that resume. So they'll be ready for senior year, ready to apply for colleges. Um, it is our hope that by the end of the junior year and with all of this information that, and all of the inventories that they've taken and all of the classes that they've had, that they will be able to, by the end of their junior year, at least the summer, that they'll be able to put together a list of between five to seven colleges that they're definitely serious about applying to. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Mr. Vinso Capinti, and he's gonna talk to you about what they're going to do in senior year. Aloha again. Senior year, the all important senior year. This can be a very exciting time for students and parents and counselors, but it also can be a very anxious time. There's a lot going on 12th grade year. Besides the focus on academics, of course, keeping up a high profile transcript for college admissions when they apply for college, there are four additional things that our students will be doing and with parent support and with counselor support. College application process is one, scholarship application process second, the financial aid uh, application process third, and of course May 1, the national college deadline in which in which families and students have to indicate what college they intend to enroll at in the fall. So there's a lot of big decisions going on in senior year, and we have a host of seven tasks that help support our seniors in their decisions during senior year. One is they are expected to take an SAT, ACT test. This is required for college admissions. Um, SAT, ACT tests can also be taken junior. In fact, our focus in our and our, our recommendation for most students is to plan on taking at least one SAT during the spring of junior year, and then of course follow up with another one or another one after that the um, first semester of senior year. Resume again, we're revisiting the resume, and this will be for the last time. Here the students will be finalizing their resume, saving it and filing it in Naviance. It is a graduation requirement as the other counselors have talked about. Attend college visits. The beauty of this is that seniors are also welcome to attend college visits if they 
had an opportunity or missed an opportunity to attend a college visit during junior year, they can do so senior year. Most of the colleges that do visit come back annually, right, Mr. Morales? Okay, and again, over 200 colleges come. The nice thing about attending college visits is we have moved to an online system of registration. Again, the junior counselor mentioned that's done through Naviance. The beauty for the counseling department is now we can get an indication of the kind of numbers expected at these meetings, and if we need to go to a bigger location, we can do that. Senior college counseling meeting. Let me bring these two up together. Apply for college. Before, so there's a couple of things going on. In the junior year, they are building a, co a list called Colleges I'm Thinking About. Eventually, that'll be moved to a list in Naviance called Colleges I'm Applying For. What the students should do and are recommended to do is to meet with their college counselor, do a senior college counseling meeting to review their list of, of uh, colleges that they intend to apply for before they actually engage in the application process. Apply for scholarships. Seniors can also apply for scholarships, especially if there's need and there's need for the family. We definitely encourage that. Applying for college. Basically, that'll happen in the first semester of senior year. Applying for scholarships, that usually kicks in mostly the second semester of senior year. Complete the graduation survey. This is something expected of all seniors. This will happen sometime during the first week of May when the national college deadline date kicks in on May 1st. What this indicates for, there's two things going on with the uh, completion of the graduation survey that we're looking for from seniors. One is, what school are they indicating that they are going to enroll in in the fall? In other words, what is their college of choice? Okay, and then um, we turn this, this information over to our registrar and that will indicate to our registrar where their final transcript will go. Seven tasks. Uh, you'll notice that four of the seven tasks are asterisked in white. Of course, they were all kind of mentioned before with the other grade level counselors, but these are all graduation requirements. So folks and students, on top of the graduation requirements that you normally have to do academically, 24 credits, right, expected by the end of senior year, and the non-credit graduation requirements, things like your proficiencies, your school service, your ecology, and your guidance classes, you're also required to complete these four other tasks, the SAT, a resume, applying to college that can be a four-year college or a two-year college and then complete the graduation survey. This is expected of all of the seniors and they must do this in order to be eligible to graduate and walk at Blaisdell in May. Okay, I think it's a good time to turn this over to Mr. Morales, our college counselor, and he can talk to you about how all these tasks tie into his preparation and planning in his meetings with the students. Mr. Morales. Thank you, Mr. O. Can I get a quick show of hands? How many freshman parents do we have here? Freshman parents? Very good. And sophomore parents? Okay. Let me tell you right now. As you're paying attention, right, and you're listening to this, you can see that freshman, sophomore year, you visit, you revisit. Junior, senior year, we live in Naviance. This is where we operate every day. And so when I was preparing for uh, my... Um, part here. I said, well, what can I show? And they said, how's about Steve? He kind of show them what happens in a typical college counseling session using Naviance and this whole idea of a college search. I said, okay. So what I did, since all of us as counselors, we had to create our own Naviance account. So I'm going to kind of take you through my Naviance. Why are you guys laughing? Okay, are you telling me that there are no children of the 70s in this room? Come on. No, I'm the only one. I know Miss Bagayas was my student, so I feel real bad here. Okay, here's the question of the day. What color is that jacket that senior year Steve Morales is wearing? What? Yes, it's powder blue, yes. Yeah, come on, it was the C and K days, guys. Cut me a break. So, what I want to do here, so this is the counselor side. So, when I'm checking up on a student, and I loved at the beginning of the year when I'm working with seniors, it had their freshman year picture. I turned my monitor. Who's that? Go, Mr. Morales, please take that off. They've updated that, but I haven't seen anyone as worse than this. But what we want to see is that right here. So, you guys have 
access what did I must have logged out here okay let me try that again why did it family connection what's going on here I bet you okay let me try re log in that's got to be what happen let me go to my test here again Steve test Vinny we might be using your thing it was working when I was practicing there we go okay thank you okay so this is what you see when when you log in so the typical student here's what they have here's where the different things that they were talking about live the my planner the career clusters and things like that so when we're working with your child again, so this is going to be starting next year. We're halfway through the year, sophomores. You guys are going to be up here in just a few more months, and we're going to hit the ground running with this kind of stuff. So we're going to look into the colleges, and you can see that there is a lot of different things that's happening in there. And one of the things that was mentioned is right here, super match. So this is one of the things we're going to encourage you guys to take a look at. And what we can see here is that there are 23 different indicators or things that um, are part of a student's college search, right? They always say location is important. What do you want is a major scores all the way down. So let me show you because once you do a search, you can save it. And yeah, let's name it this one. And here's a search that 1977 Steve Morales did. When he was in high school, and you can see how I went through the search. I said, these are my must-haves, right? These are very important to me, and this is kind of important. So school type was definitely important to me. I wanted a traditional college university. I definitely wanted to live on campus because I'm going to the mainland. I don't want to be living on the street. Gender mix was important to me. I wanted co-ed. It's so funny, parents. Sometimes I'll be talking to a student, especially a female student, you should consider an all-women's college. And they'll look at me like, is you high? <laughs> no, no, no. Consider there's research out there that shows just how much um, uh, girls excel, how they become CEOs of companies, just how it can really help them. But no, me, I want a co-ed. Yes, I definitely want some place where I know I will graduate. Yes, sports, I want Division One. I. I want to see Division One football, man. That's what I want there. And then different things, right? When I pick location, I wanted to look at these specific states, right? Different things like that. I don't want to go to Ohio. Um, <laughs> when entered my scores, <laughs> that was sad. And then, now as you pick, as you pick, what happens is you'll see that, you see this list of colleges. That will change for everything that you put in. So once you put in your scores, you put in your GPA, different college will come up. So after I did this search, here's colleges that came out. I said, cousin, Vanderbilt. Yeah, I want to take a look at Vanderbilt. So on my own side, when I click on this, it will take us to a, this page where if I want to, I can take a virtual tour of Vanderbilt, get an idea about it. And then I can have an idea of what is the success rate of Kamehameha students who have applied. Okay. Wait, wait, that came up as a 93%. I know more chance. <laughs> wait, what is this? But what I can do is I get, and, and that's just some, right, just some very beginning. Of course, I'm going to check with my college counselor. But one of the things I can do is, okay, maybe I want to add this to colleges I'm thinking about. I want to add this to my list. So, and I can, again, I can scroll down the list, take a look at them all. Oh, Penn State, baby. Wake Forest, Miami, Connecticut, all these different schools. So when I come back to colleges, and let's look at, so again, juniors, this is some, oh, sophomores, when they become juniors, freshmen, this is something you guys can start already. Colleges I'm thinking about. And so when I click on that, we can see here is different colleges that came up with me, and we can see that Vanderbilt I just added. Yeah? And so now as I'm thinking about that, I'm doing different type of research, so that eventually I can put them on, because now I'm a senior, the colleges that I will be applying to. And so I got it down to Grinnell, UH Manoa, Miami, and UNLV. So when you're taking a look at that, okay, I have my stretch school. What do you think would be my stretch school? 
definitely the Miami. Miami would, would be because it's somewhat selective. We're going to take a look at that as well. Okay, I have my, not only my financial aid safety school, my, my safety school, but it's a financial aid safety school, Manoa. And we, one of the things in the myth that will not die is every year we get um, seniors who come up, do I have to apply to UH Manoa? No. The graduation requirement is you apply to a college. You do not have to apply, apply to a local college, but you should. Because just in case, this will be like your financial aid. If everything goes south, know that we can afford this particular school. And of course, UNLV, because the strip is right close to that. So I want to just take a look at that. <laughs> and so now I'm working with my college counselor in regards to, OK, these are my college selection. Now, what are some things, families, that you can do as far as, what about us? How, what is a research tool that we can start looking at? Well, when I come back to the home page, here is one of the programs that I really love. And it's, it's, we have it as a link in Naviance, but it's really right here, College Navigator. Now, when I click on that, that's going to open. You can see right off the bat, it's a federal government website. So, of course, the feds, they will tell the college, give us information about you. Here's what we want to know. And if the college says, we don't want to give it, well, then we'll cut off your federal aid. Okay, here's the information. So this is information that is supplied by the school itself. And what's interesting is sometimes I've seen a disconnect in regards to what a college is telling a student versus what they told the federal government. And so this is that idea of asking questions. Get ready to ask questions. So why don't we look up my school? Let's just put in Miami. Oh, University of Miami comes up, okay. When we enter that, and I do know, even out of all of this, the one in Coral Gables, Florida. So when I click on that, it takes me right off the bat right here. Now, one of the first um, indicators, the first things that you could have chosen if you saw in the super match was location, right? Location, location, location. So I want, if I wanted to, I could click on this map, It'll take, show a Google image of what Coral Gables looked like and what the actual campus looks like as well, too. <laughs> Two years ago, I'm working with a senior. He found this college in um, New Mexico. And I'm like, brother, I never even heard of that school. How you found that school? Oh, no, it came up in my college search. Oh, OK, well, let's go to Navigator. So we went in here, and I said, and I never heard of this school. I said, where in New Mexico is that? So we clicked on the map, and like I said, it's a Google image. So it's showing down from space, and it's showing the campus. So you can see the campus. There's buildings. There's green grass. And then there's this little band of white going around the campus. So, what? Expand that little bit. So he expanded the picture some more. There's more white. I said, Mr. Mars, you think that's by the beach? Oh, Hawaiian. This is New Mexico. No more beach over there. Expand some more. <laughs> so he expanded it even more. The college is in the middle of a desert. <laughs> I'm not kidding and then there was a little dirt road leading out of the college with a town maybe the size of holly eva about 10 to 12 miles away and i'm like bro you like go there you know i don't want to go there now <laughs> <laughs> location is huge okay location location and we can see right off the bat it is a private not-for-profit so families will know that okay no matter where you come from everybody's going to pay the same if it were a state school, you'd be seeing the difference between in-state and out-of-state tuition. So of course, I am a parent of three, two college graduates, one in college who will graduate this year. And first thing we want to know is tuition and fees, right? We want to take a look. What is the cost actually going to be? So we want to look right here at total expense, tuition, fees, books, supply, room and board. And we can see that as of 2013, they are up to almost $61,000 a year. Okay, that's not for four years, family. That's $61,000 a year. So, many of you will probably say, okay, no, negative, go to the next school, right? <laughs> okay, no, parents, and I'm glad we got it. breathe, okay? This is where you have to support your child. They're not going there tomorrow, they're just doing their exploration. So bite your tongue at this point, because that is total cost of attendance. What you'll see is there's a difference between cost of attendance versus cost of parent. What do I mean by that? Okay, so we got to know the total cost, right? So about 61000 So when we close this, 
What we want to look at is what is known as the net price. What is the actual cost of a college to a family? So when we open this one up, what we see is that we'll have different pay ranges, right? Your income ranges. And let's say that mine fell about here. We go across, look at the actual cost. It's not 61000 family. This shows you right off the bat, this college is very generous. I mean, even if they're making over right, 110000 a year, you're still not paying $61,000. So again, that idea here, cost of attendance is very rarely cost to parent. One of the things I also love about this site, you have this thing right here, what is called the net price calculator. The Obama administration has mandated that every college has to have this net price calculator. Some colleges absolutely love their net price calculator. Well, you will go in, you'll just enter some basic financial information. At the end, you get this figure, which for some colleges is right on the nose. Other colleges hate this. They hate this, not because of what it reveals, but because they say, you know what, you'll get this, but it won't tell you what potential scholarships your child might be available for, especially being native Hawaiian and 70% of college students across the United States are blonde hair, blue eyes. So they want diversity. And a lot of colleges will pay money for our students. I am not kidding you. Do you have a question already? That, if, you, if I went back here, you can kind of have an idea. So the question was, will that predict the potential cost? If you went here, you can have an idea about the change, yeah? So you can kind of keep going up 3.6% every year or so, just to maybe indicate what it might be. Totally, you guys, have your kids early. <laughs> so again, that's that idea of cost. So right, right there off the bat, cost of attendance is very rarely cost of parents. Now, sometimes with state schools, it will be, especially if your child is going out of state. But again, that does not, um, many times it does not have this idea or will tell you what scholarships or institutional aid they might be eligible for. So we hit the cost right off the bat. Now, here's what's important to me as a college counselor. I want them to look at the retention and graduation rates. So retention rates, how many freshmen come back their sophomore year? We can see Miami's at 91% outstanding. Standing retention rate. So you know that if you send your child here, there's a good chance that they are going to continue on. There is a phenomenon called the turkey drop, and it really happens at colleges. Just about November, December, especially when it starts getting cold on the mainland, a lot of students start to second guess, did I make the right choice? Is, is this a good college for me? It's cold, always cold. And if they're Pacific Northwest, it's gray and cold. And that's when a lot of them seem to drop um, out of school and or come back home. So there are colleges that actually address this thing. They will talk about the turkey drop. I'll tell you right here, we see that at Miami. Those kids buy in. Whatever they're doing, they are doing it right. Now, I always say as an indicator, if you see a retention rate 60% or lower, kind of a red flag. But again, don't discount it unless it's in the middle of a desert, right? Ask questions. So if this college were at 60%, your child was really interested in, I would tell them, look, if your college comes to visit, you ask them, what is your current retention rate? And if it's somewhat low, what are you doing to address it? So retention rate is important. What about the graduation rate? Outstanding, 71% of students who started in 2007 graduating in four years. Anybody know UH Manoa's four-year graduation rate? 19%. It's going up. It was 11% a few years ago. <laughs> I kid you not. I'm not kidding. Now, remember it's about asking questions. I tell you again, my daughter's going to graduate in a few ways, hopefully the end of this year. Because when she was registering for classes for this fall, during the summer, right, coming in as a senior, all classes are open. So she's out there working. Oh, this class is open. Oh, perfect time. She made the perfect schedule. She could not solidify that schedule. What's going on? What did I do wrong? She's yelling at her brother. He's a graduate. And <laughs> what she's yelling at him. She just had the vent. What's wrong here? He's go. I don't know. I never saw that before. What happened now is UH Manoa. You can only take it so far in the registration. Then you've got to go talk to a counselor. And then they will look over your four-year plan. Where are you at? What are you majoring in? Are you on track to graduate? And then they release or will open up 
the classes so that you can now register. I'd be willing to bet money that within a few years, Manoa's graduation rate will go up. So for me as a parent, that's a good answer. Terrible graduation rate, but it is being addressed. So again, it's about asking questions. And sometimes you'll scroll down and you can even see graduation rate based on ethnicity. Baylor University, Waco, Texas, had a 100% graduation rate for Native Hawaiians. Yeah, probably the two that went there graduated on top. <laughs> of me. Waco, Texas? Wow. So that is something, again, questions that your child can be asking when they go on these, um, when the college comes down to visit, they can, they can be asking. Okay, what about programs and majors? So when we check on that and we look at, line everything up by bachelors, we see that Miami definitely is all about the business. Business is one of their most popular bachelor's degree. Now, if I had showed you in my college search, right, the, the super maths that I did, the major I picked was communication, uh, journalism, and audiovisual, because I feel I have the perfect face for radio. So I felt that that would be a good major for me. And we can see that, okay, biology, the sciences, oh, they have an excellent marine biology program, family, oh, fell in love when I was down there. There's social sciences, the health professions, and look, ah, communication. So if it's true, every year we start with the senior panel that will talk to the, well, we have an alumni panel that talks to the current senior class. That's the first group guidance we have to start off senior year. And all of them will, well, most of them will say, yeah, I've changed major at least twice. Some three, some four times. So at least for me here, Maybe I changed from journalism to broadcast journalism or digital communication. The thing is, they have a lot of different options here for me, as well as just overall. Look, I mean, okay, wait. First of all, I should have showed you this. Look how big this, this is not a big school. 16,000. But man, they got a lot of different majors to choose from. So this is looking pretty good for me as far as what the options are available to me in case I were to change mind, my mind in order to avoid the turkey drop. So definitely looking at programs and majors. Of course, for those of you who are athletes, you might want to look, like especially if it's a college you never heard of, Sitting Bull College. You might want to find, okay, what division are they? What type of teams do they have as well too? Which we know because it's Miami, but again, that's something else that you might want to look into as well. Uh, let's see. Now, here's one that I especially, I'm a father of two daughters, so you know that security is important to me. So I want to look at what is the school being reported. So, of course, arrests on campus, drug, law, uh, drug violations, liquor violations. Okay, there's some, but it has been going down. Now, again, remember about asking questions, because we can see this is as of 2012. So I might want to ask, what is it currently? Last year, um, one of Mr. Ocapente's young men was looking at a college in, I think it was Oregon. I think it was in Oregon. I forget the school. This number right here, liquor law violations on campus, 967. Yeah. He said, oh, that must be a party school. I said, bro, that's on the cover of Party School magazine. I don't care what you say. So again, that idea of safe, and especially here, where you're going to be living, what, is, what kind of activity is going on over there as well, too. And of course, I love to always see zeros. I am especially, again, I'm a father of two daughters with this one. When I see there's any numbers with that one, now, yes, that is low. But at the same time, I might want to ask, well, how is this being addressed? You know, one of the things, especially when, when our alumni come back and they like to come up and visit us, and this one rather large young man came up to visit, oh, Mr. Morales, you know what my, my, um, uh, my um, oh, work study is? I said, what's your work study? I'm an escort. <laughs> what does that mean? No, 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 get that out of here, Mr. Morales. No, because he has, I think he has class, he said, on Tuesday, Thursday, his first class doesn't start till like 12 p.m. So he can sleep in late. So what he does is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, his job is with security. They give him this nice, bright, long sleeve shirt. He's in the security office. If a young woman is at the, is at the um, library and wants to um, walk back to the dorm but feels unsafe, you call the number. Two very large gentlemen will appear. 
They will walk you to campus. I told them, bruh, I would feel safe walking with you. I might even be calling out people. What? What? Huh? Talk to my friends. <laughs> we see about that. I said, can you imagine anything safer walking between two Hawaiians? So that's his job. He gets paid to do that. I said, right on for you. So those are the things as well, too. How are you addressing the different issues with campus safety? And again, 2012, you might want to get a little bit updated on that. Parents as well, too. You know, this bottom one, cohort default rates. So we take a look at, now, your children are going to have to take loans. Okay, I know we say, no, we, we don't want to, and let's try to, and I get that, and, and I understand. There are some real good loans, so don't completely shut off. If you get a subsidized loan, subsidized by the federal government, that's as close as your child will ever get to an interest-free loan. Now, my son had to take out some loans. Um, after he graduated, not too long after, in fact, a little bit over a year now, he's been working for the post office. Dad, I need a car. Bruh, you get cola. Of course you can buy a car. You're making more than me. So we went down, sat, talked with the dealer. Oh, where do you work? I work for the post office. Whoa, okay. They know that this guy's got a good job, all right? Then, they, of course, what's the next thing going to check, parents? Credit history, right? Do you even have credit history? And he was kind of hoping my son wouldn't because then they, well, you don't have good, so maybe we got to jack this up. He has an excellent credit history because how else are you going to build your credit history unless you are paying back loans? And he's been very good in paying them back. But this idea of if you go into default, and here's where we talk to students as well about not exceeding the maximum amount in loans, not trying to get people um, to, to um, really sign the loans for you. You've got to be real careful about that these days, family. There are some stories of, of a grandparent co-signing loans and then if they pass away, because the child's name, they have to pay it immediately back. How are they going to pay back a loan when they're in college? So again, do your research in regards to loan. But this is the last thing you want, is to go into default where you can't pay it back. And we tell students to start your young life with a negative credit rating. We know, right, families? Takes decades, right? Long time to get it back into positive. We can see very low. Of the amount of students that are actually paying back loans, how many actually in default? Very, very low. I think if you look at Stanford, it's like zero point something as well, too. So this might be something um, to look at, too. But you see, there's just so much information that we can get right off of this one site. We didn't have to go all over the place looking at different things. Bam, right there, get a snapshot, some idea about questions that you can ask, and then start taking a look at Naviance. So one of the last things I'll say with students, okay, College looks good to you. Oh, I love this school. All right. It's like a relationship. Checking them out. Right? Yeah, you like how the hair moves. You like the smell and the way they walk and talk. So you might be in like with them, but how do they feel about you? And how do we find that out? We look right here in admissions. We can see that as of 2013, just, just almost 29,000 applications to the school. They have a 40% admit rate. Not bad. That's not bad. You know, Harvard and Stanford continue to go at it to see who has the lowest. Well, we're 0.5. Well, we're 0.3. What? Okay, we want more kids to apply so we can deny. So our <laughs> admit rate can go lower. We can see what is required. See, and again, this verifies what you guys heard from your counselors. Your GPA is important. It's important to your students. And right now, especially freshmen, you got that in control. You can control it. How many times I'm working with seniors and they're saying, if I'd only known. I said, no, you should have known. You just weren't paying attention in guidance. You should know. This is your time to really take care of that. Your secondary school record and especially college preparatory program, rigor and depth. That's what colleges, especially like Miami, are looking at. Are you challenging yourself to the best of your ability at your school? So yes, they're going to want to see honors. They're going to want to see AP classes. But more importantly, they want to see A's next to the honors in the AP classes. I took AP Psych. You got an F. I still took AP Psych. <laughs> Bruh, no. And then where the rubber meets the road right here as well, right? Let's look at what they want as far as along the lines of SAT scores. So 25% of the students who were admitted, they got a 600 in the critical reading. That's high. <laughs> That's 25%. Sometimes you'll see in the 400s. 75% were in the 700. Um, so those of you, when you get your PSAT scores back, right, you add a zero, and you'll have an idea where you're at. 
SAT math, 630, but 75% 70, 720. The writing, they want a 590, 690. Let me come back here from the, I don't want to show you that picture. Let me show you, so the scores that I got on my SAT. So my critical reading, 690. So I am close to the 75 percentile. Moving along past my math, my writing. <laughs> Shut up. My writing. <laughs> We got a 710 again. I am above the 75 percentile. Math? No. Now, what did I say was my potential major here? Journalism communication. I'm not going to be an architect engineer. And you don't want me designing something with that math score. So I look pretty good for this school. So this would probably be something that, especially if I get a good recommendation from my teacher, especially my English teacher or whoever, that could also sway it in my decision. Let me tell you, sophomores, next year, be nice to your teachers. I cannot emphasize, because they're the ones going to be writing the recommendation. They'll have a whole year with you. Yes, you might ask some of your senior teachers. You're not going to ask your sophomore teachers. That's too far of a break. So start getting yourself prepared. So again, that was just a quick look at one particular program, um, the link is in Naviance, but at least that's how you would do your college search families. Just kind of doing it as a family, what kind of questions come up for you, what would you like them to ask, especially against sophomore parents for your child next year if these colleges come down to visit, what information do you need to know? And then you can be doing that second level of research as well too. Uh, one of our soft, uh, softball girls is at a liberal college, I'll just leave it at that, she's at a liberal college and playing softball. Her and her cousin went up at the same time. It has an excellent reputation. Reputation When we looked at it in, in College Navigator, wow, this school is excellent. She's looking at going pre-med, so this is going to prepare her. Just the, the numbers with pre-med are outstanding. So the family takes her up. They're all happy. Her and her cousin, who's from Marino, they are rooming together, and they're both softball players. So the family's all excited. Well, you guys are going to be in the same dorm right on. So they're moving them in. It's a co-ed dorm. Boys are right next to them. And so the dad is like, oh, okay. Then they look at the bathroom. It's a co-ed bathroom. Yeah. No. Mommy's like, what? <laughs> what is this? So the two girls, their dads are brothers. And I'll just say they're large Polynesian males. And they had their other brother who actually lives about 10 minutes away, who's just as large as them. <laughs> they introduced themselves to every boy on that floor. <laughs> I kid you. Just want you to know, that's our girls over there. This uncle, he's the small one. He lives 10 minutes away. And we get Hawaiian miles. We can come up. <laughs> Fast. You understand? And the cool thing, the mom told me there was this group of local boys. You know, they're football players. They're in that dorm. Immediately, oh, uncle, oh, that's it. Oh, we're going to take care. No worry. Ah, shoot, right there. Right, the beauty of, of Hawaii, everybody take care. Oh, you guys get them. We get uncle. Give us your number. We call you. Anything happen. When I talked to her, because they came back, said, oh, yeah, my dad made friends with everyone in the hall. I go, he wasn't making friends, girl. <laughs> yeah. He was making sure the young men knew. So that's that next level, parents, yeah, for you to continue to do your research in this whole process. We're going to get them ready. You see how they're good building up freshman, sophomore year. By junior year, we're hitting it. Senior year, as Mr. O said, we are on fire using Naviance for their, college, their, their overall college plans. Okay, and I've exceeded my time. So at this time, uh, family, I am done. Our presentation is done, and we wanted to open it up to questions. So um, if anybody has a particular question that you want any of us to address, uh, please ask. If not... You guys are free to go because it's cold. It is cold in here. Any questions, families? Oh, we have a question here. Yes. When are the scores released? So the question was for sophomores who took the PSAT test, when are the scores coming out? OK, so we have received the scores. Um, some students have been receiving an email 
uh, from College Board. So if they get that email, then they can go ahead and look at it online. But we do have a guidance uh, class coming up in two weeks. And so we're going to be distributing the score reports to the students at that time. Okay. The question was, are we offering an SAT prep in the summer, in summer school? Yes, we are. We are offering a class in summer school. Yes. Best time to, best time to plan for okay. college visit. So the question was, best time to plan college visit? You mean to actually go and fly in to visit the campus? Oh, at any time. At any time. Yeah. Summer is, is probably better. I'm sorry? Oh, ne no, no, no. We, we even have students that, um, seniors who are going now to a actually go and, and, and visit their campuses. Um, I like what McAllister, no, it's Carleton College, which is in Minnesota. They prefer students come up this time of year so they can see what's going to be like, negative 40. So, yeah, yeah, at any time, go and visit, yeah. Any other questions, families? Okay, again, thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. What, there's evals? Oh, the blue card you got. If you could please take time to fill that out. Is there someone in the back? And in the back. They're collecting the back. Thank you very much.